We're here in San Bruno, California today to demonstrate remote identification or remote ID. Network-based remote ID is a great way to provide correct and consistent information about flights regardless of the app that they're using. Over the past year, a group of regulators and a lot of companies from around the world have been working together in a standards-making body known as ASTM International. And the purpose of that standard is to make sure that any drone being operated under any UAS service supplier can be identified. To demonstrate the capability of the ASTM standard, we've got industry-leading participants from Wing, AirMap, AirExos, ANRA, Kitty Hawk, Skyward, Uber, UA Sidekick, CNN, and Flight Test. And across that set of USSs and operators, we've got a good cross-sampling of commercial and recreational uses of drones. I think today is a great example of industry coming together to say, this is the standard we want to implement, and this is the performance-based way in which we want to do it. Today we saw a complex utilization of the airspace. We had two package delivery providers as well as inspections and hobbyist utilization of the airspace. And then onlookers were able to use one of several different applications in order to identify the flights. That information was made consistent uh, across all of those different applications using something called the Linux Foundation's InterUSS Instantiation Remote ID. The ASTM standard allows for a network-based remote identification. This means we can bring together multiple operators. No longer do we have to worry about spectrum or other interoperability concerns. It all happens right on the internet. Flight Test is an amazing community of 1.4 million subscribers, and what we do is we put out a show every week celebrating flight, uh, DIY, how to build, how to fly, how to create. One thing we really want to teach people is how they can enjoy the hobby of flight, how they can get into it, get inspired by it, but also how they can do it safely. Network Remote ID is really great for the hobbyist because it doesn't require them to buy anything, put anything in their airplane. All they need is their cell phone. Hobbyists can participate in Network Remote ID simply by downloading the app, putting in their information. They can even fly in controlled airspaces. The easier we make it to have people to be able to communicate where they're flying and what they're doing, the better it's going to be for everybody. So in this scenario, a person sees a drone hovering in a location. They're not sure if it's supposed to be there. So they call their facility manager, and the facility manager is 10 miles away, uh, but they're still able to use the network remote ID capability to put in the address and see that there is a drone operating there. The ASTM standard allows the person that's in a remote location to check on drones flying at a particular address, and it makes sure that they don't see all the other drones that might be in the area, but just in the location where they're searching. This is an important privacy consideration both for drone operators and for potential customers of drone services. People are obviously going to have questions about drones operating near them. The great thing about the ASTM standard is that the onus is very low on every single party involved. Operators today are able to implement with minimal overhead, and consumers of the technology are able to get the information they need with very little implementation. It's not based on regulations that are old in the past, they're based on the future of what this industry can be.